Do you want to give somebody access to your Airtable database, but you don't want them to see everything that's inside of it? Well, then this video is for you. We're going to be going step by step on how you can build a custom UI or user interface for different users so that they can interact with your Airtable database. But at the same time, we're not going to actually be granting them full access to the base. So if that's of interest to you, stick around. Let's get to the good stuff. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I am the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses get organized and automated using Airtable and Zapier. In this video, as I said, we're going to be talking about building your own custom UI. The real advantage to this is Airtable's permission level, when you give somebody access to your database, doesn't get very granular. It's hard to monitor pieces of data and make sure that people only see what you want them to. And so in this video, we're going to build a custom UI where we're making sure that they see only what we want them to see. So let's jump on in. So inside of my Airtable base here, you'll see this is just a simple example, uh, essentially uh, like a contact CRM type. We have contacts on, on the first table here, and you know we have phone number, email address, first and last name, pretty standard stuff. And then this links to the last interaction that we had. And so we can track our interactions with folks, what type of interaction it was, if we need to follow up, what we talked about, if it was an email, you know, we can parse out the subject in the detail or in the body. Uh, and so, you know, you kind of get the idea here. And so really, you know, this could be any tables though. The, the actual data that we're working with has no impact on what we're going to build here. So let's uh, jump into how we might set this up in a custom UI. First and foremost, you need to pick a software of your choice to you know, be building this in. I really like to use Google Sites, especially if it's an internal use website, because it's really easy, click drag, you know, dra or drag and drop, you know, pretty simple to use interface. Um, but you, know, you can of course use uh, your own, uh, or a, a software of your choice. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into my Google Site here that I've set up. You'll see that this is a brand new uh, Google Site. All it has is a homepage and I've given it a title. First thing I'm going to do is plan out the different pages that I want on this UI. So I'm going to add two new pages here. One of them is going to be contacts. And the other one is going to be interactions. You'll notice that these are the same names, of course, that my uh, tables have. So I'm pretty sure you can guess what's going to go here. So inside of these, uh, what we're going to do is drop in or embed uh, the vision or the view from the Airtable database that we want to uh, give people access to. Now remember, this is a view, so they're not going to be able to interact with this data directly, but they will be able to copy it out of here and, uh, and work with it, and they can also submit new data using the forms. So let's go ahead and uh, imagine what this might look like. So you see here that we have a, a hidden field already of interactions. Uh, perhaps you know, there are data points here that we don't want people to see on our user interface. Well, we can, first of all, we'll go ahead and start a new grid view. And we will call this custom UI. And on this view, what we can do is hide those pieces of data that we don't want folks to have access to. So I guess first and last name is a bit redundant. Maybe they don't need that when we also have the full name right here. We have the email address. We have the phone number, last interaction. Maybe, they, maybe the custom UI does not need to show the next follow-up. That's fine. Whatever the situation is, the point is make it uh, however you want them to see it. Then if you want to lock this view down, if you're on the pro plan, that would be advisable. That way no changes can be made to it. Now the next step that you'll need to do is go ahead and share this view. So you'll go into the share button on the toolbar and create a shareable grid view link. But rather than going to this URL here, instead grab the embed code by clicking on embed this on your site. And you see you have a bunch of uh, different options here. You can use the card layout on the desktop, which looks a little bit different, like this. I prefer the grid view, personally. Uh, you can show view controls, meaning give them the ability to filter and hide, or you can turn this off, and then they don't have that access. I don't mind if they have that access, let's say, for this particular one. So uh, once you have those settings how you like them, go ahead and grab this embed code and copy it. And let's swing on back to that Google site or wherever it is that we're working. And we need to go to the table that we're working with, in particular the contacts table. And we're going to insert this data on the contacts table. 
We can click the embed selection and embed code, drop in that code that we just copied and go next. It'll give us a quick preview here, make sure that's what we want and we can insert it. Now all of the different uh, sites are going to vary here, but you can then size this and uh, you know drag and drop as you need. Now one other piece of information that we're going to need here is how do people update information on this site? Well, we would need to create a button and give them access to a form. So maybe they ha we have a new contact. And let's go back over to our Airtable database now. And what we need to do here is create a form. So what's the information we require for a new contact? First name, last name, email, phone number, interactions will not be a part of this. That looks good. We can change this form as we need to. This would be new contact form. You can get as fancy as you'd like here. If you're on the pro plan, you do have some advanced options as well. From here, we can share the form and grab this URL or embed the form on our site. I prefer to actually just take the URL, uh, but uh, you know, they're, they're both options are available to you. I'll take the URL in this case, come back here and assign that URL to this button so that when the button's clicked, uh, the person clicking it will be taken right to that. Uh, form and be given the ability to put new information in the database. One thing I don't particularly like is how interactions is cut short here. I'm going to see if I can go back into the contacts on our specific view and open that up. The changes that you make inside your view in Airtable should be reflected here in the site. Let's see if that change was captured. Give it a moment to load, and there we go. Interactions has been opened up as well. So if you change your mind over time and decide that you want to add new fields to this table or remove fields, you can do so, and those changes will be updated on your custom UI as well, just by making those changes here inside of your, uh, in the specific view that you've shared. All right, so now that we got contacts, we'll need to go through this step one more time. So let's go ahead and do that for the interactions. So going to interactions, we would create a specific view again. Let's make another grid view. We'll call it custom UI. And we can set whatever different groupings or sorts or, or whatever we would like in order to make this, uh, you know, present data in the way that uh, that we are looking for. So let's suppose we wanted to sort by this field in reverse chronological order. And we wanted to hide some fields. Maybe these aren't necessary for our particular uh, view. And there we go. We have a view that we like. Again, lock it down. Uh, if you're on the pro plan, go ahead and go to the share view, create a shareable grid view, enable or rather embed on your site, choose your controls, grab your embed code and head back over to the uh, page that you're going to be embedding on. And here we select embed code, drop the code in, and lo and behold, we have a nice, a nice table all set. All right. You notice that we can uh, navigate between the different tables here, interactions and contacts using the header. Uh, you can also build buttons that flip you between these different things. You can uh, click and drag and you know make make these as uh, large or as small as you would like. And one last thing, of course, would be to add a form here on the side as well. Once we're all set and this whole thing is complete, we can go ahead and publish this site. Let's call it custom UI. And let's go visit our site. So now we have this nice database here that we have access to and we can only see the things that we have uh, set up in our specific views. And of course we can interact with the data using our forms as we built this contact form. Let's bring in a new contact. 
test this out. Let's go ahead and submit that. Okay, now we can close this form view out and back here we will need to refresh this page in order to see the updated information. And there we are. So using the form, we were able to interact with our custom UI. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you don't wanna miss future Airtable content, be sure to click subscribe by selecting one of those buttons below. And if you wanna swing by our website and check out some of the other uh, more advanced things that we offer, definitely do that as well. One of the options there would be to book some time uh, to get on a chat with us on a consultation and we can talk about different things that Airtable might be able to do for your business. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.